Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new episode of Sotoro Talk. Today, we're going to speak about custom suiting. And if you follow this channel since a few years, you may ask yourself, what? Hugo Jacome is going to talk to us about custom suiting again? Because, you know, it's probably the main, the main subject with custom shoes and custom suits and custom ties and shirts. We are all about customization and bespoke tailoring on this channel. But I will explain to you why we felt with Sonia it was the time to make an update about the market of custom suiting in the USA, in England, and all around the world. Why? Well, probably you noticed that um, the standards, the dress codes, as we say, are loosening and loosening more and more every day. Uh, if you looked at the TV a few days ago, uh, I don't know when this uh, show will be broadcasted, but I say it was a few days ago, the G7 meeting of the uh, seven most powerful president in the world, on one picture they decided to be fashionable to remove the tie. Okay, some people may find this fun as, as a form of liberation at last. We are getting rid of this old-fashioned object. From our side, we like elegance and we, we, we feel it's almost a shame. Why? Because it's just for us, wearing a tie is not only uh, looking good or trying to put yourself in front of anybody, it's also respect, uh, having respect for your public and the people you are acting. And as a president of a state, I believe that when you wear a tie, you just show uh, respect and the fact that you care for your position and you have some esteem of the position which is the highest position in your country. But that's another subject altogether. Let's back to custom suiting. Why did we have this impression that it was urgent for us to update you on the whole subject of make to measure suit? First reason is that this market, maybe you will not believe it, but is exploding. Yes, you heard me, the market of custom suiting is progressing very quickly. Why? Because on the other hand, the market of ready-to-wear suit, you know, the crappy stuff you buy for $200 around the corner at the mall? Uh, well, this market is literally collapsing. Why? Because the dress codes have been loosening. Even the lawyers now, on Friday, they don't even wear a tie and a suit. And on, in some big corporation, not only you don't have to wear a suit, but I've seen some corporations who encourage their people to loosen their dress code and basically to come as they are. I can understand this in the IT industry where the new uniform is the t-shirt and, and the jeans and of course the trainers, but it's more difficult for me to understand in uh, some jobs where you have contact with the public, but that's also another subject altogether. The problem we want to address today is that as the ready-to-wear is collapsing, now the people who are wearing suits, they uh, have the choice to go ready-to-wear or to go make to measure because it's for the same kind of price range. You have the choice uh, between having the same suit as everybody, a gray or blue suit of the rack or a custom suit. Uh, on which you're going to choose the fabric, uh, the construction, the type of shoulders, etc., etc. It's obvious that everybody will go custom. So, hear me well. I don't say that the market of suits is improving. No, not at all. Less and less men are wearing suits. But what I say is that the men who are wearing suits by choice, they are almost all of them moving towards made to measure. Now, this is the heart of our subject today. The problem is, when a market or an industry or a profession is increasing, all of a sudden, you have some, um, what I like to say, um, semantic usurpation. That is to say, people start to use, uh, as marketers, words that are not exactly correct. When I hear a made-to-measure um, salon using the word bespoke, for example, uh, when you just look around and you see no tailors at home, it, it's a little bit for me some kind of uh, dishonesty. So let's make an update and let's re-clarify together the words and what a MTM salon is and at the end of this show should be. I will give you a few tips on how to make sure you are uh, at the right place and you will get 
great value for your money. So, on the world of made to measure, at the summit of the pyramid, you have what we call the bespoke suiting. So, bespoke suiting, now you can see some people are using and overusing this word like it is a simple word. No, bespoke suiting is the summit of the pyramid. That is to say, a bespoke suit is a suit that is designed, the pattern is designed by a tailor, is cut by hand by a tailor, and is crafted right there in the atelier of the tailor, that is to say, in the same place as you do your measurement, and then you have multiple fittings, starting with a basted fitting, a loose fitting, and then a second fitting, most of the time a second and maybe a third fitting. That is bespoke tailoring. So this is the traditional way of doing things. This is what we love with Sonia. This is the ancestral craft that we've been protecting and promoting since almost 10 years, or more than that, also it's almost 15 years actually, on this channel and on ParisianGentleman.com. But obviously, uh, it requires uh, 100, of, uh, 100 hours plus of work by hand, it requires multiple fitting, and it's, there's less and less people who want to embrace this craft. So, and I know, for example, that in America, there's a few last of the Mohicans here and there, and a few young tailors establishing themselves, but it's not the norm. But the main point of bespoke is the price. You understand, ladies and gentlemen, that when we go to that level of artisanship, the price uh, is correlated. So I would say that the average price of a real bespoke suit entirely made by hand at a tailor shop in the US will be somewhere starting at $5,000, if not $6,000. In France, the best salon like Chiffonelli comes Delica, they even start at 7,000 euros. It is extremely high price, not to even speak about Savile Row where the prices are around 5,000 British pounds. So you understand that it's not for everybody and even if you have the money, you may not be as interested and as passionate as we are to invest this kind of money on bespoke shooting. So that's the bespoke. I remind you, pattern is unique. It will never be um, sold to anybody else than you. So it is your pattern uh, and everything is made by hand and everything is crafted right there at the atelier of the tailor. Now, when we speak about make to measure, you can even hear sometimes made to order. Uh, it's something totally different and uh, this is why I wanted to clarify this because some people try to blur the line a little bit. You know, they use a little bit the word bespoke, they say we have master tailors, blah blah blah, but most of the time it's just marketing. Here when we speak about made to measure salon, we speak about a different way of doing the thing. The result may not be so different if you don't have a trained eye, but the result can also be actually exceptionally good, but it's totally different in the way it is crafted. I explain to you. When you go into a made-to-measure salon, the main difference is that your suit will not be crafted at the place of the tailor. Most of the time, and actually all the time, your suit after measurements is sent to a factory uh, sometime around the corner. In New York, for example, we have an example for that. Sometime in Eastern Europe, sometime in Italy, which is the country for this kind of crap. Uh, it can be also in Portugal, it can be in India, it can be in Canada, it can be also in China, of course. So, you understand, you go into a tailor salon, a tailoring make-to-measure salon, but even the word tailoring is a little bit usurpated, but let's say, okay, it's, it's say tailored, it's, at the end it is tailored for you. So you go there, but don't believe that your suit's gonna be made here. It's gonna be sent most of the time overseas and will come back. And unlike the bespoke um, suiting where you have multiple fittings, uh, in the case of MTM, you just have a measurement process and then the suit comes back totally finished. In the best salon, you will still have some room for alteration, adjustment, if there's some flaws. Of course, if it's totally, totally failed, you can redo it. But most of the time, it still requires a little bit of adjustment, but basic adjustments, not very complicated one. So you understand the fittings, the fitting process, the crafting process is totally different, but also the price. 
is totally different because we are speaking in good make to measure, let's say from $600 to $1,500, maybe $2,000 maximum if uh, uh, there's a lot of finishing by hand. But let's say that the average basket for a good MTM suit, make to measure suit, will be around a thousand bucks, pretty much. Uh, if you translate this in euro, it will be 800 to 1,000 euro because you know that the euro and the dollar are pretty much the same these days. And I, I, I don't know the translation in British pound. I know that you guys, British, you're going to translate this very easily. Now, the main question for you is, how do I choose? Where do I go? Mr. Jacome, I want to have my first, or not even my first, a new make-to-measure suit made for me, for my wedding, for a special occasion, or for my business, or for everyday life. I want to have a beautiful sport jacket made to my measure. I'm ready to jump in the big swimming pool and to try custom suited, but how do I choose? Because there are many custom suiting operations now in the USA and all around the world. How do I choose? Where do I go? What are the criteria that you can give me so that I can select the right place to go? Well, uh, I'm going to give you a few tips for that. But uh, first, remember one thing, is that in custom suiting, as in bespoke suiting, as in ready-to-wear actually, the only thing that counts is not all the bells and whistles the people will put around you, uh, the way they receive you and all this kind of, uh, you know, marketing. The, the most important thing remains the cut. So the first advice I will give you is look at pictures of what this empty head operation has already done. Because sometime between you and me, uh, I'm, we can't help but laughing. We don't mock people. It's not our, our way of living. But sometimes we see some things that say, is it made to measure? Really? Some people don't ever eye. So the first reflex, very simple, look at pictures, browse pictures, and you will immediately see if there's some taste here or something that you like, because after all, we don't have the same taste. Some people prefer to have more ease in their suit. Some people prefer to have a little bit more tighter. You know, there's a lot of things that can come into, that you can take into consideration, but look at pictures first. Second, just look at their website or their marketing and try to track if they overuse some words to attract you. Like, for example, if a made-to-measure salon uh, who is crafting abroad saying that his master tailors are doing this, that his bespoke tailors, if he used the word bespoke for an MTM salon, just look at the price. If the person used the word bespoke and it's $1,000, it's not possible. It's just like, um, like my grandfather used to say, if you want to buy a Grand Cru Classé of Bordeaux, you can't buy it for 15 bucks. It's impossible. A Grand Cru Classé of the highest level or a great one in Burgundy of the highest level is 150 to 200 euro a bottle, not 10 bucks. So you understand that's the first thing. If they're overused, our master tailors do this, our master tailors who have 40 years of experience do that, and they use the word bespoke, but they uh, put a price at $1,000, this is just not serious. And it tells a lot about the people who are trying to sell you a suit. The second thing, which is correlated to the first one, is what I would call transparency. The first question I ask when I enter an MTM salon uh, is always the same question. Where will my suit be made? And you would be surprised because on many websites, they don't say it. They don't say it because, well, uh, this is not a crime. Some of them are crafting in China, in some very good factories that are most of the time leaded by Italian people. Uh, this is a big movement. Uh, a lot of Italians and master tailors have been moving to China to direct factory. So it's not a crime. Well, you may or may not like it, but it's not a crime to say that your suit is crafted in China, it can be crafted in India, it can be crafted in Portugal, it can be crafted all around the world. But the point is, ask the question if it's not written on the website, and if they start to be embarrassed or to say, well, you know, it's crafted in an atelier 
in Europe. Well, when they say in Europe, it can be Romania, it can be <laughs> Italy, it can be France. Ask precisely what it is. Once again, there are fantastic factories all around the world, even in India. But ask the question, not only to judge, but simply to judge their level of transparency. Transparency is reigning supreme. And this is in all the successful business right now. I believe that honesty and transparency is very, very important. That's the second point. And the third point, well, actually there will be four thoughts. The third point is um, the time they will dedicate to your appointment. Well, I've seen made to measure salon who are dealing with the whole thing, the choice of the fabric, and then the choice of different uh, options, your lapels, your pockets, the lining, etc. etc. There's many, many options. This, this business is really exploding. So you have many, many options. But if you do all this and the measurement, and normally they use what we call a prototype jacket, which is a, an existing jacket from their factory, which is used just to show, to see a little bit your body morphology and then to retouch it uh, simply with some needles. Okay. If all this takes 30 minutes, you're not at the right place, my friends. This first appointment is according to our experience and believe Sonia and us, we've been visiting many, many, many of them. I would say that a serious job will not be made under two hours. I know it's a lot of time. I know it's not in the American culture to spend two hours to choose a fabric, but you will see at the moment you taste this, you have this taste of saying, oh, I'm choosing my fabric, but not only just the type of jacket, I'm choosing the lining, which is the basic, but also you can go as far, I'm choosing the lapel, and I'm choosing the width of the lapel, and I'm choosing the type of shoulder. You will see that little by little, you will become totally passionate with that because it is so, it's such an experience, a human experience to have the impression, and this is actually the reality, that you really choose all the small idiosyncrasies and details of your suit. This is a fabulous experience. So that's uh, the third advice, the time the people invest. And you see that the time that a, a person will dedicate to your first appointment speaks a lot about who they are. Some people just want, just want to make money fast. They want to just deal with you in 20 minutes and go to the next guy. Uh, you know, in order to take, uh, I don't know, 20 appointments per day. The best salon I know only take five or six appointments per day. They take their time. Uh, of course, if they have like 10 or 20 style advisors inside the house, they can take more. But for one person, I would say, yes, three or four appointments, five per day, so that they can really dedicate. And it speaks millions about the, the company and the care that, because if they don't take care of you at the first appointment, you can be sure that your suit's going to be crafted, not also with real care. So that's my third advice. And my fourth advice is ask about the experience of the people. Because the problem, once again, is when a market is exploding like that, um, well, some people improvise themselves master tailors overnight. They know the process. It's quite easy to set up an operation now. They, uh, they buy a software when you can shoot things, you know, the details, and they call uh, one wholesaler of fabric and they just establish, put their plate on and say, uh, tailor and, and tailoring, made to measure tailoring. But what is your experience, my friend? This is a job which is complicated. I'm not saying that you should close the door to young people. No, 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 no. On the contrary, but does this young guy has been studying uh, tailoring? Or if he didn't study uh, tailoring, why does he turn to this job? Is it because he's passionate? Passion is very important in this kind of craft. It can easily replace a training. I know somebody will be <laughs> a little bit surprised by what I say, but passion is everything. So try to understand why this person is here. Does he have a long experience or does he have some kind of an incredible passion for the craft? So you see the way he moves, the way he speaks to you, the way he's handling the needles, the way he's showing you the fabrics, the way he doesn't try to influence you to buy this specific fabric when you have, can have the choice of, uh, among hundreds of them, tells a lot about the people. 
So now we're going to take five examples in order to illustrate what I just said to you uh, in, and to show you what a good or uh, even a great make to measure salon should be. We're going to take two examples in the USA, we're going to take uh, one example, two examples in France, and we're going to take one example in the magnificent, uh, fantastic, stunning city of Prague in Czech Republic. Yes, you heard me, in Czech Republic. And you will understand why we selected these people, not only because they are doing beautiful suits for men, but because also they are doing beautiful made-to-measure suits for women. So let's go to the first one. The first one, well, it's easy. I'm wearing one of their products. It's uh, Enzo Custom. So Enzo Custom, uh, it's a company that uh, we discovered, I would say three years ago, just before COVID. And to be honest with you, this was the first time I was doing a MTM suit. So uh, understand me, it's not my first made to measure suit because I have probably more than 50 suits on, in bespoke tailoring full bespoke, but it was the first time I wanted really to give it a try to something, you know, that is not totally made by hand, something made in a more industrial manner, but with still a good fit and, and good quality. And so we went to visit Enzo Custom. If I remember well, it was in Washington, D.C., uh, in their salon in Washington. Enzo Custom, uh, they have a salon. I tell you now, I have to say to look at my notes. They have a, a salon, so a place in New York. Manhattan, in Washington DC, in Chicago, they have one in Beverly Hills, in Philadelphia, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and a new one in Miami, Florida. So you see those people, uh, well, look at my suit, we're going to show you pictures of my suit. You see, it's a well-cut suit, and I think their price starts around $500, $600. This one may be a little bit higher, uh, and I would say some somewhere around $1,000, you're pretty sure with Enzo Custom to have a good quality. Uh, the way they welcome you is absolutely marvelous. Well, in fact, they offer you a glass of Chardonnay. I was joking about the Chardonnay just before. Um, um, or Chardonnay or something else. Here we would say, you know, we live uh, 15 kilometers from Chablis. Uh, Chablis is Chardonnay, by the way. But that's an another story altogether. Uh, the, the style advisors are most of the time very experienced. Well, everything is quite perfect. The, the choice of fabric is literally enormous. You can have access to all the fabrics you, you can dream of. It can be for your wedding, it can be a business suit, it can be more a sport jacket. So everything is pretty well made. And in my case, as uh, we were in, the, in DC just for a few days, uh, we didn't have the time to do a second fitting. So they just took my measurement. Uh, it lasted a good hour and a half, two hours, as I said, the whole process. They put on to me, they put on, they put on me a fitting jacket. This is a, almost every MTM salon was use a, a prototype jacket and they readjust it to my measurement. I asked them for a higher home hall, you know, all this kind of detail. But as I couldn't wait and I was not, we were back to Europe a few weeks after, I received my suit directly finished at home. So the suit you see has never been retouched. It's been crafted like that. I think they craft in China. This is why this is very affordable, but in a factory that is led by Italian people and that they work with since many, many, many years. So I can testify of the quality. This is irreproachable. There's nothing to say. And the, the suit I wear, I, I'm gonna, I, we're going to put some other pictures on the screen. Well, has not been retouched. No, no alteration. It came like that. And I must say, I was very impressed about the quality. So that our first recommendation that it's for us, the real example of how an MTM salon uh, should be. Our second recommendation, or the second salon, or the second brown, because now it's becoming a brown more and more, is our friend Christopher Corey in New York. So his prices are slightly higher than Enzo Custom, because I think the average basket at Christopher is around $1,200. But uh, if you look at his website, you will see something very interesting. What I like with Christopher uh, is that he has impeccable taste. And the choice of the designs he offers for his made-to-measure suit is absolutely stunning. And what I like even the most is that sometimes, you know, you like inspiration when you go on to this kind of, uh, 
of places you see most of the time, grey suit, blue suit, wedding suits. Christopher, he dares to offer many things that nobody else offered with bold stripes. I've seen some beautiful green suit, yellow suit. I'm not telling you that uh, you have to wear a yellow suit. Huh? It's just to give you the idea that this guy has a very, very safe eye and it's made in Brooklyn. It's not handmade. It's made by machine in Brooklyn in an atelier that his, um, his um, uh, partner Carl is owning since decades. I think it's a, even a family business. There's some finishing by hand, but it's a, it's a beautiful product for, and it's extremely good value. You have to go uh, at his boutique on Manhattan. We will give you the address and the link, of course, in the description of this video. But if you're looking for something, you know, really that say something, you don't go to Christopher Corey to buy your business suit. You go to Christopher Corey because you love wearing suiting. You love suits. You love being elegant. And believe me, he will advise you and you will uh, um, step out of his shop a different man after the delivery. Same thing. Uh, all the alterations are covered and are done by his team. So it's very, very safe. So this is our second recommendation. Christopher Corey, I think the brand is CKC. Christopher Corey Collective in New York City. So now let's speak about two French companies. Uh, and I chose them because we know them very well and because they represent, in our opinion, what the best value on the market for custom MTM suits in France. So if you visit Paris, you want to have a good experience with some French taste, you know, which is different from America, uh, we advise you to go to these two places. The first place is our friend Julien Scavini. We call it our friend because if you are following our French channel, he is a guest speaker uh, many times. He has his own chronicle, actually, on our French channel because he is some kind of a... This guy is an encyclopedia of tailoring and I can give you uh, uh, some kind of a scoop. We are preparing with him a book on the history of tailoring and the techniques of tailoring uh, that will be released probably next year. Julien is a tailor himself, so it means that he is able to uh, craft a jacket by himself, by hand, uh, from A to Z. But this is not what he offers in his boutique, in beautiful boutique in Paris. He offers uh, MTM suiting, jacketing, overcoating, shirts, and is a specialist of trousers also that you can find uh, on ready to wear, by the way. But that's another subject. So, Julien, uh, we like him because, uh, first of all, he's a tailor, and second, he's doing the job, I would say, properly. Same thing, the right amount of time, at least two hours, um, the right amount of experience, he is a tailor himself. His uh, suits are crafted in Romania. So it may sound a little bit exotic to you, but Romania is a great country for uh, custom suiting and also for shoemaking. Romanians are very interesting people, they're very francophile. I don't know if you know, but the old generation were very close to France and many old people in Romania still, still speak French. So anyway, if you are in Paris, you want to have an experience with a really experienced tailor uh, for a price around thousand dollars, maybe a little bit more in dollars, 1200 maybe, depending on the fabric, or you want to craft a beautiful, more casual jacket, because I know he's very good at that, you must pay a visit to our friend Julien Scavini. The second company in front that we love has an English-sounding name, it's called Howard's. Howard's is our friend Frédéric Costa. Frédéric Costa is originally a shirt maker. Uh, a company who's selling shirts and is a specialist of shirts. By the way, on his website, you can find beautiful shirts for very good value. But since two years, he decided, with his long experience of looking at the bodies of guys, fitting shirts, meeting a lot of people, uh, he had a long, long experience and he said, OK, it's time for me to go, in, to go into make to measure suits. Unlike Julien Scavini, everything at Howard's is made in Italy. That is to say, the atelier with which he is working for the suits, for the made-to-measure suits, are, uh, is in Italy. Beautiful atelier. And the main point of Howard's is, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do something with Frédéric Costa and his team in Paris, first you have to take an appointment, and second, you have to really uh, have time. Because those people are the epitome of what we can call passionate people. They are totally crazy about their job. They love it. 
they will spend two hours, three hours, even four hours if necessary with you until you are totally confident that you choose the right fabric, the right cut, the right lapel, the right trousers, etc. etc. They go as far as uh, I received um, um, an email a few days ago actually from a person from Finland. And he wrote to me, Dear Mr. Jacome, because he asked me many months ago, uh, Mr. Jacome, uh, I'm visiting Paris, I would like to have a good make to measure experience, where do I go? And I said to him, Go to Howard's, my friend Frederic Costa. It's uh, the street called Rue d'Amsterdam. It's very important because there's two Howard's in Paris, so uh, you have to pick up the right one. This one is Rue d'Amsterdam, Frederic Costa. And uh, so he asked me, and I said, go and see Frederic. I think he's going to make you a beautiful suit. What I didn't know is that this guy was, I have no idea how you translate this in foot, in feet. He's more than two meters high and his muscle as Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, it's a very, very strong guy. I didn't know that. And so when they <laughs> saw him arriving in the boutique, they went, Wow, that's a challenge for us to do a custom suit for this kind of man. And then it, it, so it, it, it speaks terms about their passion. They made not less than four fittings for him for the same price. I think around $1,200, maybe $1,500. They made four fittings because they really wanted it to be perfect. They took down the, the sleeve several times because, because this man with such a, a, a muscular um, a body shape, he, 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 was, he couldn't find something that was really fitting him. And they did it for this kind of price. Believe me, this is an incredible testimony of the care. So the main point with uh, Frédéric Costa Howard's in Paris, you have to, to anticipate that you may, you may stay uh, three hours there because they are very talkative, they are very enthusiastic, their level of service is, in my opinion, unmatched of, of all the salons that we know. And on top of that, they are precious and beautiful people. Howard's in Paris is our fourth recommendation. And now, let's move to Prague. Well, uh, we discovered Prague with Sonia a few days ago. So this company is called The Owners. Their website, unfortunately, is not translated in English. Uh, thank you, Google Translation. You can still read it in English, but they speak perfect English. So if you visit Prague, which is a stunning city, oh my God, this is so beautiful, you have to pay a visit to this company called The Owners. Uh, the owners are three people, Michal, that you can call Michael, then Matej, that I call the referee because he's a rugby referee and I, <laughs> I used to play rugby so I love this guy. So Matej, uh, that you can call Matthew, and Veronica, but you can call Veronica because it's a beautiful name. And they are crafting, uh, their suits are crafted in Portugal. So we uh, went to see them last week with Sonia, and then immediately, oh, the place is beautiful, the ambiance is absolutely magical, they're very kind people, and you see, they take their time. They never take uh, two appointments unless there are two hours and a half difference between the two appointments. It speaks millions about how much they care. They told us that for them, two hours and a half is the minimum to really do a good job. And specifically in terms of fitting, when they use the fitting jacket, they take a lot of time. Is Michal doing it? He is very, very talented. You can see he has a lot, 15 experience already in menswear. And you can tell by his gesture that the job he's doing is absolutely fantastic. And then the main point for us, not the main point because it's, they make beautiful suits. They are making for me a yellow suit actually because I decided um, I'm 59. I'm going to turn 60 next year. I said it was time for me to be, to, to be daring a little bit. So I decided to do a beautiful yellow suit for next summer. We'll see how it comes. And Sonia, I decided to do a rowing blazer with Veronica. Because one of the main points of this salon and why we love it is that at last we found a place where there is a woman who is specialist for MTM um, garments for women. And we will show you some pictures. It's absolutely uh, delicious. It's beautiful. Veronica, she's a seamstress herself. That is to say, when the suit is sent to Portugal, 
because the aircraft in Portugal, when the suit is coming back, she can do all the alteration needed because she is a seamstress herself. So you have no idea how important it is. Uh, by the way, this is the same for Howard, this is the same for Scavini, this is the same for Christopher Corey, and I guess it's the same for Enzo Custom. They got some alteration tailors at home. But it's very important, specifically for women's wear, to have um, the woman which, who is in charge of this business that's being a seamstress herself. Well, they do magnificent suits and uh, tailored garments for women. And at last, we were so happy to find them because this is a very rare thing to be seen uh, uh, on the planet. And believe me, we've been traveling a lot with Sonia. So, if you want to see Prague, if you are around Eastern Europe, go and see the owners in Prague and Czech Republic. And if you want to please your wife, your girlfriend, uh, somebody you know, a woman that is asking you, where can I find a good make to measure suit? Uh, uh, and if you able, if you live in Europe, honestly, going to Prague is not expensive at all. I mean, we went to Prague for, uh, with Sonia last week for 200 euro per person. That's not expensive. And the food, the restaurant in the city are insanely affordable. This is crazy. This is why we love this city. So. If you are there, pay a visit to the owners. Now, I would like to conclude with a little bit of promotion for our work, because you know that we are publishing books, we are doing multiple things in this area. So, I wanted to let you know, first thing, that uh, this is difficult because it's heavy, 12 kilos. This beautiful box, the Parisian Gentleman Limited Edition box set, is available again. It was crafted for last Christmas, but we still have some. And these are three books, one on shoes, one on whiskey, and one on watches. Beautiful coffee table book. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but there's um, an episode dedicated to this. Thing. So just to let you know, it is available again, and I think the price is uh, 249 euros. $270, something like that. So if you want to have one of uh, this uh, limited edition uh, box set, the Parisian Gentleman box set, you just have to send an email to Hugo at Parisian Gentleman. We're going to put the link in the description of the video. The second news, which is a good news, well, it's a good news for us, is uh, that this book, this is our last book that I wrote with my beautiful wife, Sonia Glynn, uh, this is the first edition, is sold out. That is to say, uh, we are now self-publishing, as you know. We used to be published by the biggest publishers in the world, but we decided that now we are big enough to go directly to our public, so we self-publish this with our friend Olo, is um, Nicolas and Philippe, that we work with in Paris. And uh, this book is sold out. Okay? But the good news is that we're just happy to announce to you that we have a reprint, a reprint of a little brother. And I say little brother because we decided to reprint it slightly smaller. Okay. When I say, you see the difference between the two? Is it good on the camera, darling? You can see it, okay? And so, <coughs> you see, why? Because this one is a little bit more easy to handle. It's still a coffee table book, but it's easier to handle. Uh, this one was sold, I think, 85 euros, $99. This one is sold. 65 euros, 69 dollars, and it can be shipped to your place via DHL. Same thing, if you want to reserve your copy, uh, we reprinted uh, 1,000 copy, I guess. So if you want to reserve your copy, you just have to drop us a mail. You go at parisiangentleman.fr uh, Parisian and we will uh, send you a payment link and the book via DHL. That's it for the promotion. So I hope you had a good time with us. So I hope this tips we gave you to choose uh, your MTM salon will be useful for you. And please, my friends, it's not because the dress codes are loosening. It's not because, you know, post-COVID people to just retain some habits like, you know, um, working in sweatpants and working at home. Uh, all this is not a reason to loosen the codes. Uh, this world needs beauty more than ever. This world needs elegance more than ever. This world, which is becoming violent and brutal, needs politeness more than ever. And we believe strongly that our little sartorial movement can really add something in the plate for, uh, to, to make this world a little bit more polite, kind, um, 
um, compassionate and beautiful. Thank you for listening and I give you an appointment to the next episode of Sotorium Talks. Bye bye my friend, take care.